Marshall Bruce Martes the third, known professionally as Eminem. Uh, he's not afraid. And we have a man in the studio who is definitely also not afraid. Uh, <laughs> Definitely not afraid. He's Mr. Michael Amankwa. is back uh, to share some thoughts on us. Today we're looking at living in the moment. We're going to ask him what that means and uh, how we can all live in the moment. Good morning and welcome back, sir. Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm super excited to have you back in the studio. I mean, uh, since we met, I've been looking at mountains differently. And then over the, I think it was, was it last weekend or the weekend before that, uh, we, we had a... Um, a management retreat somewhere in the breeze some corners like that and i'm looking at the hills and i'm like yeah that's where i beat mr kuku yangson to the foot race oh wow yeah yeah so i'm planning to also do I, i've said that probably in, in the next year i should do a faja yeah i should do a faja because uh <laughs> I, I should do a faja as my birthday gift to myself nice that's nice, a plan nice, nice, yeah nice, that's nice, a plan nice. and I, i'll make a lot of noise about it on social media and all that that i'm climbing a faja just for for shaggy reasons yeah facebook live we'll do facebook live <laughs> well, mm, not really you know like the life team might put a lot more pressure you know uh, pressure is good you don't want to do it and then come and say i did it you know take all the videos but if people are watching you especially uh, i know a bunch of katanga boys who would not want me to and so that they can get something to but anyway welcome back Thank living so in a moment what does that mean Oh wow! Okay, it's 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 a deep question to answer. Mm. So I think what I'll do is not just give you a definition, but give you a backstory as to what I mean by living the moment and what it means. Um, yeah, before that, you asked the question where the name Don Miller came from. Yes, yes, yes. So that's <laughs> my nickname. A lot of people know me actually by that, not even by my real name. As in exactly why I'm asking that question because right after our first program, someone called me and said, "You interviewed Don Miller." I said. No, I interviewed Mr. Michael Long. Said, that be Don Miller. <laughs> so then that forced me to go on Facebook. And, and that's when I saw the Don Miller. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, so he's yeah. more of Don Miller than Mr. Michael Amankwa. <laughs> oh, wow. So where did it come from? I got it from St. Augustine's Form 1. You know, when oh, wow. I went to St. Augustine's Form 1, 1990. And uh, as a Form 1 student, you know how the seniors will always bully you and stuff like that. Yeah. So anytime they came around and tried to bully us, I'm always calm, collected, and very confident. And you see that, uh, you know, my, my, my mates already panicking and stuff like that. But I was always coming and collected and I always ne wanted to negotiate my way out. So okay. then my father used to work for Ghana Food Distribution, okay. which was the nation's food bank. So I had a lot of provisions, sardines, gari, shito, and all of this. So when the senior comes to believe me, I negotiate and then I sort them out. Ah. So they saw me as a mafia down that Charlie. This young man, oh, okay. he always managed his way out. So that's where the Don Miller name came from. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> well, that's an interesting story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they, but because like everybody said, Don Miller, you interviewed Don Miller. It was a big deal for people, you know, when I posted the pictures. So living in a moment. Yeah. So it's a very good question. And when your producer sent me a message that he wanted me to uh, just come and, you know, spend some time with you guys, I said, okay, well, let's, let's look at a topic, living in the moment. Uh, so let me, let me share a little bit about my background. You know, I call it a decade of darkness and enlightenment. Okay. You know, I'm 53 years old. I'm a, uh, I'm a technology entrepreneur, and I've, I've been back since 2005. I started one of the fintech companies in Ghana. I represented, you know, multi-billion dollar companies, you know, through that service. And for the first, I think, good couple of years, we were riding the wave, man. Everything was working out. You know, I set up with about a billion dollars. You know, I had a beautiful office, the furniture, wow. the ports, the paints, you know, the big server rooms, the data. I mean, all of that, right? And, you know, we had a good one. And I was so driven. I've always been driven. Because remember the last conversation I told you, my goal was to be a billionaire in dollars, man. Yeah. I just wanted to be one of the, the moguls in Africa. You know? And that's always been my dream. So I always used to pursue that, you know. So I end up in multiple countries in Africa, we're in India and all of that. Then the decade of darkness and enlightenment started. Oh, you wow. Know? So that's when our things started going down. Things started going down. The businesses that I represented there were changes. They had merged with in another company, so there were changes. So now our dealership was in jeopardy. The local market, my main competitor had also woken up because I had already taken market share. So he took, and he was a sleeping giant. So the guys woke up and Charlie were coming after me, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And uh, then I got, you know, super excited about the future. So then I wanted to become the mogul mogul by being a key player in the financial space okay 
So then from a fintech, I went into financial services. I own a microfinance and asset management. I was at the verge of acquiring a, a pensions business. And then the last one was going to be an insurance company. Oh, wow. The full 360. No, the full Charlie, all of it, man. I was go full bank. And not just in Ghana, across board. Across board. But around the same time now, the, the economy, which is in Ghana, was beginning to shrink. Businesses were beginning to, you know, things were getting tight. Now, you know, the business were now cutting down on costs and things like that. But at that point, I had already activated this big dream of going, you know, the full bank. So then I realized that, Charlie, okay, things were beginning to change. My partners were pulling away. Uh, now paying the bills were becoming difficult, you know. Then I started losing people. And I'm like, Charlie, what is happening? Man? Oh, wow. What is happening? What is happening? Then at that point, I was spending like two, three hours a day just sleeping. The whole time, I'm always up just trying to figure out what to do and things like that. Then the financial, what do you call it? Uh, the, the cleanup also came. And then, Charlie, the, you know, that's what kind of like catapulted it into a whole different stratosphere. And now you have people's monies that now people are calling you and they need your monies. And, Charlie, those who are threatening you are threatening you. I remember one time a guy, a guy came to my office with a pistol. He sat in front of me and the guy was half drunk. And all of a sudden, his gun, you know, goes off. I'm like, Charlie, what kind of life is this, man? At that point, Charlie, I mean, everything in my life that could go wrong was beginning to go wrong. I was in my romantic relationship was tanking. I was beginning to feel worthless. My net worth was going down. You know, and as a person of integrity, you, you, you know, and that's where it hurts because now when your character is being, you know, attacked because yeah. now you can't honor your word, you can't honor your promise, that gets to your core, that eats you. By that time, I didn't know what mental health was. I didn't know. So, and naturally, I'm a very private, quiet, you know, introverted, reclusive person. So when the heat was coming, I couldn't really talk to people because the few people I talked to, the next time I realized your business is on the street. Ah. Now, yeah, and people are, you know, just cooking stuff here and there. And you start feeling dirty. You know, you start feeling dirty. You start feeling like, Charlie, I mean, what's happening? And it gets to a point where it's like constantly you're being burned in a crematorium like you know you know like an oven a furnace you're just it, it in doesn't there. end and you also don't come out no you don't come out. it's like continuous i mean continuous you you can't sleep you wake up the heat is on like continuously it's, it's going it's going and you can see your dreams you know just dying with you so then i realized that okay look i'm in another phase of life so i accepted it and i say you know what okay i am falling so i said okay god i know i'm falling i know there's something you want to teach me there's something in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow myself to fall. So I allowed myself to fall for because you can't fall forever. You are going to hit something yeah. at a point, you know. It's definitely. And then when bottom. I hit rock bottom one day, I was in bed, woke up in the morning, and then I saw tears coming down my my, my cheeks. I'm like, okay, Charlie, when I hit rock bottom, this is it. This is it. I'm like, okay, I hit rock bottom, but I didn't die. I have life, and if I have life, I have to fight back. In the process of falling, was there ever a time when he said, "I'm going to"? cop out of this thing called life you see at that time you you're always trying to fight back but at that point the weight of the, the 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 heat and the challenges it's so huge that it's hard for you to get out because at that point you know and i was telling a friend long ago that it, it got to a point where you know it's like you have two white substances one is salt and one is uh, um sugar, sugar. Yeah? you've tasted the sugar and you know it is sugar but the guy is telling you it is salt then you start believing that it is salt. That is when you realize that mentally, Charlie, you are going somewhere. <laughs> you know, because at that point, you are helpless. So anything that anybody is telling you, you are believing them. And at the same time, too, Charlie, some of my people were stealing from me. I didn't know. Wow. You know, like I'm talking millions. They were stealing millions. You understand? So by the time you realize now, that money that is gone is now your liability. You know? So, so, so as much as you, you're, you're digging, you're fighting back, the weight alone just wastes you so much. And that's why a lot of people give up. So you see that somebody who just commits suicide or they yeah. take to certain vices like, you know, like heavily drinking, smoke, doing drugs and things like that. Because at that point, you become helpless. But the other good side of it is that I had a few good friends. Few good friends. Mm -hmm. You know, one is in the U.S. and then one was here. And without me saying anything, they always knew that, Charlie, I was in a good place. So they were constantly checking on me and lending a hand and supporting me and all of that. Oh, wow. You know, so, so and there are people that I cherish so much today. You know, if, 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 if I had to give them my, my heart for them to live a second in this world, I would give them because of what they did for me. They stood by me. And, 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 and so whilst I was falling, I was falling, I was like, okay, it's okay. It's because I've had a good run and it's not always going to be good. So now if the bad has come, then let me chin up, let me 
take it like a man and deal with it. So I got, you know, I went through all of that. And then when I hit rock bottom, where now I'm just lying, and you wake up and you're like, I can't believe I'm alive. Because you don't want to be alive at that point. You can't go and commit suicide. And I'm, I, you know, I pride myself as a lion, a macho man and all of that. And the macho man is weak. The lion is weak. <laughs> and the problem with lions is when they are sweating, nobody sees. Nobody sees. It. Nobody knows. And also because I'm calm and collected, you know, and also I'm the only child of my parents, right? And they knew that something was wrong, but I was never telling them how bad it was. You know, I didn't want them to also worry because, yeah. I mean, they've, they've loved me. They love me and they've given me their best. And I didn't want them to be... You know, and one time I asked my, 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 my son, I think it was about six years old at that point, that how will you describe daddy? He says, dog daddy, office daddy, sleeping daddy. Oh, wow. And, and then when he used, because I love dogs, I love big bubble dogs, so I'll take them for a walk, like, you know, you know so he used to see that. And anytime he would see me, through, I'm too tired, so I'm trying to catch a sleep, or I'm always working. So when he described me as office daddy, dog daddy, and, and, and sleeping daddy, that hit me. Oh, goodness, I'm going to ask my son this question, yes. right? No, you need to issue. know how do you perceive you because we missed it because we never lived in the moment, and I'll tell you why. So when he told me that, that hit me. I was like, okay, child, I need to start changing things. So that's when I was like, you know what? Okay, the only person who can change my situation is me. Okay. God is there. He's going to do his part. But me as a man, as a person, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I understood the risk, and I took it, and now I am down and almost out. I have to fight back. This is not how my story ends. So then I started with the walking because I realized that, look, anytime I went for a walk, I was getting good clarity of mind. I was beginning to feel good. Then the walking tends to, you know, running. Yeah. It started into the hiking and then it started into. So when I was going through all of that, I kept on reflecting and I also started reading heavily, heavily, a book a week, a book a week. You know, I was reading, reading, reading. Then I realized that, okay, this thing called life, there's strategy to it. <laughs> now here it is. We have the past the mm -hmm. present and the future. Yep. Most of us concentrate on the past and the future. The past is because you've lived it. So if somebody has wronged you, somebody has hurt you, you've experienced it. So it's with you. So when somebody mentions the name, the first thing that comes up is what they did to you. Exactly. You understand? And a lot of folks are stuck in the past. So if you are having a conversation, you realize that all they talk about is the past. So if you're on certain school platforms, you realize you're talking to your old mates, they're always talking about back in the day things. <laughs> Hardly do you see them talking about now and the future. Then you have those who are also looking at the future. And I used to be heavily driven on the future because I wanted to be what, a business mogul to have all the finest things, make sure that my family was taken care of. Okay, at that point, I had promised the woman in my life I was going to get her a Range Rover. I mean, like all the good things. I wanted her to tally Feel that, you know, exactly. feel, feel yeah. me as a man, yeah. you know, and, and, and because I was so driven and focused on the, on, on the future, everything was just future, future, future. So that's where I was like, I wanted to be a billionaire. I wanted to own the biggest financial institutions in, you know, across Africa and all of those things. But here's the thing about life. You don't have control over the past. It's gone forever. It's gone. It's 9.17 now. Yeah. 9 a.m., 20, whatever today's date, is gone. It will never come back in, in our lifetimes. Then you have the future, which we don't control. Tomorrow is not promised. We don't control tomorrow. A lot of us think that, oh, Charlie, we control tomorrow. We, you know, we are going you to make plan tomorrow. for that tomorrow. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting. You can leave work today and say, oh, guys, Charlie, see you tomorrow. We say it loosely. See yeah. you tomorrow. Oh, God willing, tomorrow. We sign off like that. We sign off like that. Knowing as we, we feel assured, like we are guaranteed tomorrow. We are not. All we are guaranteed is this particular moment, this very moment you and I are here, because that's what we have. So when I was reflecting and thinking about life, and I was like, okay, I've looked at the past. I've looked at the future. The future took me somewhere. I was insanely optimistic. But what I missed was the now, because I never really lived in the now consistently. We all live in the now here and there, but not consciously. So living in the now is you being conscious of the moment you have that particular time so if there's anybody listening here and you are you're, 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 you know you're listening okay and you're at work and you're on social media is that the best way to use your now you've been employed to work and be paid you were not employed to come to work and be on social media so what it means that you're now you are not used utilizing it properly you are going against what the contract of your employer and you're not doing yourself a service so then I said to myself that, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pursue happiness and inner peace at any point in time. While still pursuing the goals? 
Good. So you always need to have an idea of your goals, which informs your now. So I said that, look, I want to be physically fit, emotionally sound, spiritually connected to my maker, and, and mentally sound. Okay? So those are like my core, my, my core pillars before I have my entrepreneurial goals. So at the core is my physical. So every morning I made sure that, look, I am exercising, taking care of my morning. So anything else that in will interfere or distract my morning routine, I don't toy with because that morning is my sacred, happy place. If I get you right. Yes. In that morning. Yes. If a million dollar calls come through, that would aid your entrepreneurial. You've put in systems that said that you wouldn't even pick it. No, I won't. Because right now, here's the thing, okay? And that's where the distractions comes in, okay? So, for example, let's say, you know, I mean, as an IT person, we develop a lot of software. Because we are always thinking about, oh, this feature, oh, this feature, this feature, we keep on building features without validating it with people. So, a lot of times, you are there, you're like, somebody comes to say, I have this business idea, or I have this business idea, I have this business idea, and you're hopping, you're jumping. But here's the thing, your resources are limited. But when you are sure of your now, so your now defines what you do at any particular time. Wow. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's yeah. why we all miss it. So have an idea of your past. Learn from your past. Okay? And a lot of times what I do is that now I'm reflecting, you know, and wisdom, okay? And let me use let me introduce the word wisdom. A lot of people think that wisdom is a function of aging. Okay? Wisdom is a function of what? Consistent introspection and reflection. Oh, that's why it looks like the aged are the wiser. Yes. Because they've lived life. Exactly. So the more they go back and, you know, think about exactly. the decisions. Uh -huh. so, but uh, you don't need to wait till 90 or 70 to be wise. Because now you can reflect on your yesterday. What did I learn? What did I not do well? Then tomorrow, you know, you actually try to implement what you learned from it. And then the compound effect of that exercise is what makes you smart, knowledgeable, you know, wise, and then imaginative. Oh, wow. Never thought of it that Exactly. Way. I get you what I'm talking about. So now what I do with it now is to say, okay, this morning, what is the most important thing to me this morning? That connects with my future. Here's the thing. Do you want to grow old in vitality or do you want to grow old in sickness? I want to grow old with vitality and not sickness. Yep. Therefore, my morning is what takes care of my vitality as I age. So at that point, everything else is secondary. Oh, wow. So when I am having my morning routine where I am running on the campus of the University of Ghana, where the weather is so sweet, you can hear the, 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 the birds chirp, the, you know, uh, you, 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 can, you can feel the, you can smell the, the, the flowers, you know, and, 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 and just the weather. The whole experience is amazing. And as you're running, we have something called the runner's high. It gets to a point like 15 to 20 minutes into your run, you start realizing like you, can, you feel like running the whole day. Because you're not getting tired and you're feeling good. At that point, the, uh, um, the happy hormones are being secreted into your mind. So at that point, I'm like, now nah, I'm being reflective. I'm being real. And that moment, I'm in the moment. So it's like everything else is shielded off. Ah. So you are feeling good. And in that state, your pressure is also reduced. Today, a lot of us have hypertension. Yeah, yeah. And we are developing stress of, and all of that. Yeah. But in that moment, that experience is reduces. Oh, wow. So it's, it's healing in the process. Okay, so now when we talk about living in the moment, understand the past, have a good idea of your future, but what you do in the moment is what is most important because that's what you have control over. Is it not interesting that you'll be running along the same path, having all this beautiful connection with nature, and along the same path, there's a guy who is also running, but he's running because he's late to work. So the same path, same human beings mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the same journey, mm -hmm. but one is living in the future because he has to catch a job, da 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 da. Whilst one is just enjoying. Yep. And then when that person gets to work, because they don't understand and they are not living in the moment, they go through the day like robots. So when you were talking about uh, the customer service person goes in there, they're looking at the company policy, they're refusing to think outside of the box and, you know, uh, uh, be creative and be smart and all of that. Because they're not, they not living, the, if you're living the moment, you keep on asking yourselves, this particular moment, am I doing something right? Am I doing something smart? Oh, am wow. I doing something valuable? Now, let me flip it for you. I mean, I see a ring on your finger. You're, you're, you're a happily married man. Yeah, 16 uh, years. Yes, well done. Congratulations. Thank but that you. business is a very difficult business. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, 
a lot of us are challenged in our romantic relationships because we never live in the now with our loved ones. Now, if you are with your, your wife, okay, if you are with your wife, you can just look at her and say, sweetheart, come here, kiss her on the forehead, say, I love you so much. Oh, wow. Sweetheart, last night, are you aware you farted in your sleep? Then she'll say, oh, how? I didn't da 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 ba And I'm like, okay, don't do that again. And she'll be like, oh, how? But I was in my sleep. How will I know? Oh, you're lying. All of those things, yeah? Oh, wow. Or you're there at work right now. You're like, oh, you know what? Let me call my wife and say, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? I just want you to know you mean the world to me. A lot of us don't do these things consistently. No, we don't. Why? Because <laughs> we are not living in the now. If your goal is to end your life happily ever after with your partner, to live in the now in love, you always have to check on your person, make sure that you're always making them feel heavenly, sweet, happy, and all of that. Are you seeing where the now comes in? Yeah. We don't live in the now. Or sometimes when we do, we are not consistent because we don't understand. It's not deliberate. So living in the now means that you are deliberately living in the moment. You are aware of what you are doing and you are showing you are doing what is right and what is best and what is of value, which connects to your future goal. Interesting. Are you getting me? Because yeah. the future, future, you don't control. The past, past, you don't control. All you have now is... So what? People would control. live for 90 years and on their deathbed realize... They have the regrets. It's a good book titled The Five Regrets of the Dying. And I recommend it to you and everybody who's listening. The Five Regrets of, of the, the dying. dying. Yes. A lot of people regret not living the life that they had wanted to live. They lived lives where they didn't you know, spend time with friends and family. They regret uh, uh, chasing money, okay? And, and that's where the power of reading comes in. When you read, you get to know about so many things so that you can, you can avoid certain pitfalls. Are you getting oh, me? Okay. Now, what I do with my living the moment is as assistants, mm -hmm. let me use a technology, you know, uh, um, analogy here. There's something called uh, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention. So that's where you have a network or you have a system whereby, you know, outsiders are trying to act, you know, infiltrate into your system. So you have the detection system that will detect if somebody is scanning you or trying to hit you or two, uh, what do you call it? Prevention. So this is where constantly I am always asking my, I'm always scanning. Am I feeling good? Am I feeling right? Am I envious? Am I angry? Am I anxious? Do I feel betrayed? Once I detect that feeling, then I'm like, okay, this is not a positive feeling that is going to help me manage it quickly. So I don't let it build and grow into a monster because when it becomes a monster, it becomes difficult to, ah. to manage. So if you, if you are with your loved one and the, there may be nuances and things that the person is doing that's pissing you off, but because you're not scanning and looking out for those things, slowly the things are beginning to bug you, bug you, bug you. And one day an innocent comment or move from the person will just pack a fire and by the time you realize all the good years and all the good times you have, you have has become nothing because just that one little thing has done what? Ignited oh, wow. a fireball. So you always have to have your own. That, that's what is conscious. It's intentional. Right? Living the moment is intentional because at that point, you're always kind of, which is basically how you feel and how you think. It's about your thoughts and how you feel. So if you are there, you're feeling, oh, I'm not feeling good. I'm not. That's what something you hear, no, oh, gone too soon. The person is dead. Because the person is not really paying attention to how they are feeling. So they are beginning to feel ill, but they are just taking it for granted, taking it for granted. By the time they realize it's too late, and then they pop. But if you are scanning, the moment you start realizing that, oh, I'm beginning to have fever. Oh, I'm beginning to, you know, feel lethargic. I'm beginning to not feel like eating. I'm beginning to feel like, oh, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to bath. I don't want to do... Those are all signs of mental health. Because you are scanning, you detect it. Now, when you detect, the next thing is what? Action. Okay. So living in the now is you are consciously aware of you. And that's where the sweetness of life kicks in. My brother, <laughs> I'm living the best time of my life now. Understanding the power of living of now. Saturday, I was at the pool. And I'm learning how to do the freestyle stroke. Yeah, so I've done a couple of laps. The one of the coaches. Oh, you're training for Iron Man. Yes, I'm training for Iron Man the triathlon. Yeah, 2025. <laughs> yeah, I'm training I, for it. I remember. Yes. So whilst you know, I was learning, I was learning. Then one of the coaches, who happens to be my friend, approached me for the first time and said, "Oh, senior, can you teach this lady or can you help this la lady float?" Okay. And I've never really been approached to help anybody there. Come here and stuff. Shout out the hustle. Yeah, the you now they learn up. <laughs> but I was honored by the invite to help a stranger that I didn't know. So I took the lady through 
a couple of sessions and all of that. The next time I realized she was floating and I saw that Charlie, the woman was happy and she just kept on floating, floating. So I said, okay, please, I'm going to do a few more laps and then I'm going to come back and then uh, check on you. So when I came back, she had done like a couple of them and then she said, may I ask your name? I said, my name is Michael. Then she mentioned her name and said, thank you so much. And you see the joy on her face. Right after that, there was another gentleman who was doing the breaststroke. And when he comes up a couple of times, I realized that he's struggling breathing. So then he stops. And, and the pool is 50 meters. So you cannot swim the 50 meter length when you cannot breathe well. So I asked him, do you mind if I help you? He said, sure. Then I said, you know what? Blow out 40 to 50% of the air in your lungs when your head is buried in the water. And when your head is buried in the water, just blow it out, come up for air. Just do that. Then he practices that and he realizes that ah, now he's comfortably, because swimming is about breathing, okay. right? So he realizes that ah, the thing has, is, has worked. Then he came back and said, ah, but when I'm doing it, I realize that I'm also sinking. My legs are sinking. And I said, you know what? Anytime you feel like you're sinking, just double kick. Just double kick. It will bring you back up. When a guy was done, he said to me, Michael, he said, sir, you understood my problem and you fixed it. But remember, know what? At that moment, I was zoned in, logged in on swimming and helping the person. So I gave the person my very best. Okay. Interesting. And you know what? I felt elated. I felt happy. I felt joy. And this has nothing to do with money. Just by helping. This Saturday, there's a young man who happened to have followed my Albra's uh, uh, journey. Okay. And when he, last week... You know, he saw me in the pool and he came, uncle, oh my goodness. He was so excited talking about all my, you know, you know, and he was like, I'm excited about mountains. I want to climb mountains. And I said, okay, don't worry. I will climb Afajato with you. So this coming Saturday, I'm going to climb Afajato with this young boy, eight year old boy. I'm taking my Saturday off just to give him that experience. Now, a move like that, do you know what it means? The universe blesses you. Because you've seen a young boy who is excited about adventure. And you actually help him experience it through that journey, that process. You are going to learn. Wow! Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because that moment of climbing a fajato with him is for him, nothing else. You would go out of your way to from here five hours to a fajato. And I don't know him from anywhere. I just see him at the pool from time to time because he's also a competitive swimmer. He's learning, so his parents just drop him off, and we happen to share the same coach. I said to him, you know, I would because guess what? I love the excitement in his eyes and his voice about what what had done in Ebros. Now here's the thing: who knows what talent and gifts this boy has? Who knows if this is the guy who will take Ghana to the moon? We don't. So when we see, when you live in the moment and you see potential, you latch onto it mm. and make a difference in the person's life. And through that process, you also feel blessed. You feel good you know it's just half past uh nine <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know i'm picturing a world in which we all live in a moment that would be like paradise paradise that's it that's it we'll be so productive our financial challenges will be resolved our conflicts because when you live in the moment you leverage empathy and and and, and emotional intelligence you know the picture that comes to mind assuming everybody living in a moment in in traffic a lot of the stuff we see wouldn't happen. No. No, let me tell you a story about traffic. So one time I was driving around <laughs> circle and a guy crossed me like real, but I almost hit him. Then I shouted, oh, bonsam, bonsam. The guy said, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. <laughs> then we both started laughing and we waved at each other. And I'm talking about road rage here. The way he crossed me, I mean, I was like, what's wrong with him? And I just said, oh, bonsam, bonsam. And he replied, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Then we all started laughing in our various cars and we waved. But look at how we resolved it. Wow. Are you getting so it's about living the moment and being what conscious? I've seen a road rage where the guy chased him from Bubiashi to like down so much. Yeah, 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 just to go and harm him and tell him his peace <laughs> of mind. And if you're not sure, the guy to maybe at that point he is mentally no sound, he's in some state or something of it. By the time you realize somebody is dead and yeah. you spend the rest of your life in prison. Yeah. But when you live in the moment, you're constantly questioning your actions, your thoughts. And it becomes like a part of you. Exactly. And that is you see. The realm in which I find myself now, my brother, Jerry, it's so beautiful. It's like heaven, even though I've never been there. Because there's this sense of assured future. There's this tranquility. 
and there's this joy that you control. Okay. That you control. So yesterday morning, you know, yesterday morning was Sunday, yeah? And I'm taking my spirituality seriously. And I go to Agape New Testament Church. Okay. So the night before, I'd eaten some food that... Reverend Whitcomb. Yes, I had eaten some food that had turned my tummy. So when I woke in the morning, I was feeling a bit strong. I'm like, oh, okay, Charlie. Make I use this one as an excuse and not go church. <laughs> then as I was there, I was like, okay, Michael, you're living the moment. What is the best thing that you have to do at this particular moment? It's a Sunday morning. And I have promised myself that I'm also going to always fellowship on my Sundays. So at that point, I'm like, okay, don't make any excuse. Go to church. But if I was not living the moment, you'd have slept. I would have slept. Yeah. And when I went to church, and anytime you go to church, there's a spirit. There's something that dwells in there when you're fellowshipping, you're singing, praise yeah. and worship and all of that. Mm. And the lightning and the people and all of that. You just feel something. And that feeling carries you through the week. Okay. Possessions. How do you live in the moment with, with all the trappings of modernity around brilliant, you? What, what brilliant. happens? When, when things were really good for, for myself and some of my friends, one of my friends bought Range Rover Autobiography, $250,000. Two hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> US dollars, and then he came to my office with the ride, and he said, "Charlie, Mike, let's go for a ride." Charlie, when you sit in the car, and the car, and it, I wanted the car to be falling into potholes and ramps. Go here, boom, boom, boom. Charlie, it's so sweet, it's beautiful. You can see you're sitting in the car. You can feel, you can feel money. But today, if I were to ask my friend, Charlie, go buy that fifty thousand dollar car, he won't. He won't. He won't. So, have enough to allow you to live a decent, good life you need to repeat that have enough to allow you to live a decent good life that's all that's all the rest no 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 my brother if you have 10 houses how many houses can you sleep in one if you have 10 cars how many cars can you drive at a time one those cars depreciate the houses become outmoded when we 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 we, we will those houses do, people will come and sell, sell those houses and break them down and build uh, whatever. They, they'll slice and sell and all of And all your toil to own and acquire all of those things goes to waste. So yes, leave things behind. But make sure that you are living for you. Wow. At the end of the day, you are responsible for you. Look, when you get heat and you're down there alone, that's when you realize that, you know what, even though there are 8 billion people on, on the planet, it is you. It is you. Those who come to you will have to go back to where they came from. You can be lying in the same bed with the person, but you are the one feeling it. The person can only sympathize and support you in whatever way they can. But at the end of the day, it is still you. So, that, so, so, so we, let's be smart in okay. how we, 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 we perceive life and what we seek to acquire. A lot of times, you see, social media, this has made, you know, IG, Charlie, everybody wants to flex. You want to look this. You want to do... But if you look this and you're not healthy, you do yawa. <laughs> you do yawa. <laughs> you understand? So when I talk to people, people are like, oh, I'm too busy, this, that, 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 that. And I look at... You can't even climb a, uh, in a flight of stairs. You do yawa. When you live in the moment and you climb a flight of stairs and you are panting, you feel tired. You know what happens? You realize that you are not fit. But when you don't live in the moment, you avoid the flight of stairs and you take the elevator. So when you live in the moment, now you start realizing lessons from nature, from the universe. Oh, wow. The universe gives us feedback. But we blocked it out because we we're blocked busy. It. We are busy. You, you want to believe you are busy. So a lot of people are just going to routines. 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 By the time you realize, you're like five years past, so ten years past, and you have not developed personally. You've not grown. You've just lived as an existence because you have life. But you've not advanced. So to advance, you have to be intentional about it. Oh, wow. Every 24 hours, you ask yourself, am I making the most of now, this minute? Today, what I'm doing with you right now, nothing would have stopped me from doing it. Because it's part of my bigger dream of sharing myself with the world. Oh, okay. Am I going to do this the whole day? Of course not. But an hour with Jerry and Zed is priceless. Because there are people listening. And if, you, if, if one person changes their mindset and their life, we've done our job. 
Because that one person can impact a million people tomorrow. Okay. Are, are you getting this? And what living the moment does for it forces you to be consistent and disciplined and persevere. Okay. So when, when, when life challenges come at you, you're like, ah. I know it's part of the process. So in climbing the mountains, when you're climbing, you're getting to the summit. You live in the moment by focusing on your next step only. Yeah, you said that. You focus on your next step only. If you misstep, you are done, gone too soon. A, a, a painful <laughs> exit will be on a poster somewhere that you don't get to see. <laughs> so you just concentrate one step at a time. At a time, and that is the beauty of living in the moment. It's so powerful when you live in the moment. Does that then slow you down? Like, you, you, you are not rushing up. When you're climbing the mountain, at a point, it is slow, slower or what? Okay. Because I've seen them trudging up Everest. You like, see, you can't, you can't go up with speed. Speed, you can't. It's impossible. Because one, the, 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 the altitude, your breathing, because the air is thin. So already breathing is a challenge. You're equally also tired. And, and what is beautiful about the question you asked is, you experience this in a lot of physical activities. So if you take running, to run fast and to run you know, fast and long, you run slow. Yeah. When you're climbing the mountain, you walk slow, slower than your normal pace when you're walking everyday life. So a lot of times, you go slow to acquire the skill. So in swimming, if you can swim slowly, it means that what? You know how to swim. It is those who don't know. That's, That's why they go bam, 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 splash. Bam, splash but that person cannot go far. Okay. Those who can go far, you see the rhythm. It's like they're just dancing. They're just going. They're just going. So in life, you have to be patient. Calm. Trust the process. Trust the process. So have an idea of the, 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 the life you want. Then start what? working towards it. It may take you five years, it may take you ten years. But when you know that you're working towards something, you will start seeing the progress. And sometimes not every progress is visible. Mm -hmm. But it gets to a point you're like, ah, I got it. And that's it. And that's where you're like, okay, okay. A lot of times we quit too quickly, too far. Just, we quit. We don't wait. We are not patient. And look at what patience. Impatience has caused a lot of people. Yeah. Friendships, relationships, and all of that. Be patient. Always always assume the person didn't know what they were doing. Oh, now we're going into forgiveness. Yes, it's key. It's key. Because here's the thing. Most people carry emotional baggages. Yeah. But why carry emotional baggage which weighs you down? How do you move up? <laughs> you can't when you're, you're carrying 100 bags of cement on your head. Can you jump? No, you can't. You can't. So if you're listening to me, there are people out there you have beefs with. I'm not saying be best friends with them. <laughs> Drop it. Let it go. Set your soul free. Set your soul free. Because if you're living the moment and I have a beef with you, I'm going to have a beef with you. The next question is, this beef, what is it for? To what end? Therefore, there's no need for me to continue with that beef. Let's make peace. And then you just let it go. You let it go. You let it go. It may hurt. It, you may have reminders. But when you, you think, you ask yourself, to what end? Wow. You let it go. And this is where I say life is beautiful when you find yourself in this realm of constantly what, being in tune with yourself. You are intentional about every action. I mean, that brings to mind um, an English phrase keeps coming to mind. Something about stop and smell the roses. Mm -hmm. or of course. Yes. Yes. How many people do that? How many people do that? Let me give you an do no this. Time no deal. No, you see, we think there's no time. <laughs> but you make time. Okay. You make time. If it's important to you, you, make you will make time. If it's not, you look for an excuse. You look for an excuse. <laughs> so be, be, and I think a lot of us are not honest to ourselves. You have to be sincere to yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. Do you understand? I am aging. There's gray hair in my eyebrow, right? That have gray hair popping up. I am aging. I can't deny it. I can go and dye my hair and try and fake whatever it is. But what am I deceiving? I am aging. So if I'm aging, what do I need to do? I need to appreciate the process of aging. And live in that And moment. live it now. So when people see me, this morning I woke up, a guy that I don't really know, I think we are, still, we are friends on, you know, on Facebook, he sends a message, I always see you at Legon training. 
He says, the next time I see you, I'll say hello. That's oh, one wow. of the messages I saw this morning, right? The wow. guy sees me. You understand? He sees me always training, but I don't know him. But today, he just decided to, to do what? Let me know on, on, and they saw your post. They know that I'm going to be on your show. He said, I get to what I'm talking about. So you do it with consistency because people are also watching you. And that's where your character comes in. Now, when people know this guy is consistently training, preaching, whatever it is, it means that you can be trusted. Okay. Okay. Imagine two glasses of water. One is muddy. You can't see through. One is crystal clear. Which one will you drink? Oh, the crystal clear one. It's a simple decision. Most of us live our lives where it's muddy. People cannot see through you. Okay. Now, if people can see through you, how do they trust you and how do they work with you? So, living in the moment also has benefits for business? Massively. My brother, I'm now about to start business. Oh. Not all that I've done in the past 25 years. Damn million all dollar. of those things no no that one was crash kindergarten things i am not getting ready to start business no I, we need to interrogate this period wow. yes i'm telling you you know why because in my mind living the moment means like buddha kind of level kind of wearing a sari sitting on a stone <sighs> you know just looking in the air waiting for some you know define no there is a moment where you can sit down alone and just start smiling wow being alone and you just start smiling why because you can see it all connected you can see it unfolding you can see it coming how do you it's a quarter to <laughs> it's a quarter to ten meaning we, meaning we have just ten minutes to go but let me go back to this sure thing. Living the moment and doing business in Ghana, how how does that happen? Not in okay. this town where okay. we go run you. I mean, okay. <laughs> Learning from so that's why I turn my decade of darkness and enlightenment. And enlightenment is where the lessons came in. Now I'm not too fixated on the future. Okay. I have a good idea of the future I want to create, but now what I'm doing now is I'm validating that future chunk by chunk, brick by brick. Okay. And like before where I assume that if I build this, people will buy it, people will use it. So then you build a monolithic application big and then you go to market and nobody wants it. Okay. But now, instead of building the big thing, I test the idea first, brick by brick. And then the moment you start testing, you're getting feedback which informs your next move. This is an interesting way of looking at it. There's a good book titled The Write It. It talks about prototyping. So they are, when we have an idea, the first thing we do is we try, we're looking for money to build whatever it is. But you've not validated the idea. You need to validate the idea by doing what? Testing the idea, not by spending money to test it. Because you can, prototyping is about you know, testing the idea without spending resources, much resources. Because when you test it, because you want feedback, you want to know whether, you know, let me give you an example. So two friends were hiking and they came across a stream and then, you know, they were thirsty. So they both drank from the stream. Then one guy said, you know, oh, this thing tastes good. I am going to do what? Bottle it and sell it. The other guy says, ah, but water is free. Who is going to buy? Today, me and you, they drink pure water. Definitely. Definitely. So you can live in the moment and make money. When you live in the moment, that's when you make smart money. In the past, I was trying to do hard money. I was, I was working, yeah, hard working hard and not smart. Okay. I don't need to work eight, eight, eight hours today. I don't. I can work one hour, but it's a smart one hour. This is revolutionary. It's about being smart. So today as a technology person, my, plat- my build platform as a service. So it's in the cloud, the computers, you know, driving the service with very few competent, trustworthy you know, associates, that's like employees or whatever it is. And the thing is just moving. And now here's the beautiful thing when you live in the moment. You don't think local, you think global. Mm. Because, I mean, the whole universe is your place. Yes, so if you have the universe to, 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 to provide service to, why you go do village business? By limiting yourself to just East Legon. <laughs> but you start with East Legon, yeah. then you start replicating but you start easily gone. You start learning. You see, when you live in the moment, you learn. Okay. 
We are, today we are talking about AI. How is, how, are, how is AI being trained? It's on data. It's learning. Yeah. And it's improving. Every time there's what? Um, what do you call it? Additions to it. So you're constantly in the state of learning, which is deliberate. But most of us are not deliberate about learning. No. Ask people, when's the last time you read? When's the last time they deliberately went to pursue a course? Not where it is company forced. <laughs> Are you, are you, are you, I get it. Are you, are you getting it? <laughs> uh huh. Because when you live in the moment, you know that self development is key to your future. So, any moment you're asking yourself, Am I learning? Hmm, for two days now, I've not learned to. I need to learn. And that's why you, you read and read and. My brother, the reading is non negotiable. The reading is non negotiable. Because when you read, it validates your thinking also. Okay. But when you don't read, how do you know that what you're thinking is... <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I feel. So a lot of times people say, when you ask people, how did, how, how did they make decisions? So I feel. I feel is the right thing. I feel this. I feel that. But we don't do feeling to make informed decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so you read to enable you validate your thoughts. Exactly. Exactly. Living in the moment. Yes. It's... 10 minutes to 10, meaning we have just five minutes. And uh, I mean, I, I know this conversation. I have not even started asking my, my, my questions because I was going to ask them this one, that how do you stop worrying? Because I love that. You see, when you reflect and introspect, you get wise. And you look at it, and what happens is this. You look back at challenges you've had, and you look at where you are. Those challenges today means nothing. Okay. You, you, are you getting it? Okay. It means nothing. So, but when you're in the heat, you think that's the end of the you world. You think that's the end of end the world. So, when you look back at all the other heat you've gone through and you're still standing, then what's the point? So, worrying does not solve your problem. It's action. <laughs> so, but when you're in the moment and you you're, you're scanning, you know what I talk about scanning how, how you're yeah. thinking all of that. The, the moment you realize that oh, I've detected a worry. Then you need to activate the counter for the worry. And what is that? Okay, what is the situation? And, you know, accept it and say, okay, now, how do I deal with it? Mm. Or how do I mitigate this thing that's causing me anxiety or worry? But when you are not scanning in the moment, it comes and it goes, it comes and it goes, and it's there, it's persistent, it's lingering, it comes and it goes, it comes and it goes, and it keeps eating at you, then it keeps on building. But the moment you scan and you detect it, you're like, okay, I've detected it, I need to isolate it, and I need to deal with it. So that's why, you know, if you take your Windows antivirus, once it detects a virus, it puts it into quarantine. And then what happens? It deals with it. It deals with it. So why are you not detecting your, your, your worry, quarantining it, and then dealing with it? Because you're not, you're, not, you're not what monitoring. So you don't know. Is that not interesting? This is something that I think uh, is going to change a lot of lives if we were conscious about it. You see... My brother, it's not negotiable. You. All you have is the now. <laughs> All you have is the now. Tomorrow, can you, con can, you, can you control tomorrow? No, you can't. Can you, you can't. You What's can't. in the past? It's gone. You can't do that. You can't. So if you can't, then Charlie, what's your, what's, what's, your, what's your story? What's your excuse? Too many of us are living our lives not intentionally. And that's the problem. That's the problem. How do we help people? What bigger project or something can we do to get people thinking? Is this something that has crossed your I, mind? I, yes, it's crossed my mind. And you see, and that's why, you know, as a mental catalyst, I, I, I do these things to show people how it's done. Okay? Mm -hmm. My first thing is, look, commit to just walking 5K steps or 10K steps every day. Just start with just simple walking. Not the one that you are selling in traffic and then you are walking, walking, and then you have gotten your 10K. Deliberate. I want you to be intentional about it. Say, okay, from this time to this time, I am just going to walk and commit to doing that. You know what happens? When you start doing that, when you're walking, you think. Yeah, I do that. You think. You must be really, really something else to be walking alone and not think. <laughs> 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 the next thing is what? The quality of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So you can be thinking to go and scam somebody or you can be thinking to what? Advance yourself. But the moment you start thinking, so let's look at the positive side. You start thinking. 
you start realizing it's possible, it's possible, it's possible. Then say, oh, let me take this action. When you take the action, you realize that, oh, Charlie, I just did it. I just did it. Then that's where confidence comes in. Culturally, we, we frown on people who are confident. Yeah, they're arrogant. They're arrogant. I, mean, I remember a friend defined, de- described me as Michael. You are borderline arrogant and confident. It's a borderline. <laughs> he's, not, think, he's not too sure. <laughs> yeah, he's not too sure. You know, and I smiled. And I said, guy, I can't do the things I do if I'm not confident. Yeah. I don't know anybody in all the books I have read or the people that I admire do big things in timidity. <clears throat> so confidence, I embrace it. So I am, I describe myself as someone who is un- brutally confident. You know why? My confidence is based on what? My faith and my belief in my maker. No one can take that from me. No, because the relationship I have with my maker is so solid that I look, I pray to him many times in a day. So the moment I feel a negative feeling, I pray. I say, God, help me deal with this. Wow. Are you guys what I'm talking about? And you know what? He helps you with it. So when people look at me, so this man, Charlie, they feel cool, oh, Charlie, this guy, the way you see, you the sugar and body, they do that, whatever it is. They don't know. But my confidence is grounded in my maker being by my side and taking care of me. So no matter what heat I take, I know that I love. My God will see me through. All I have to do is what? Remain calm and go through the process. Living in the moment. Living in the moment. What a discussion. This is a good way to start this week. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've learned so much. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, the verse 19. Let's start 18. Yeah, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. Pastor Jerry, nice one. (laughs) This is also vanity. Vanity, yep. So why the struggle? Why the laboring? We want to kill somebody to get something. When it's all said and done, all you have are your memories. So collect memories. Collect memories and not things. Collect memories and not things. Mr. Michael Amankwa, they call him Don Miller. He's a mental catalyst, I told you. He challenges you to think differently. If he has done that to you this morning, follow him on Facebook and social media. Look for Don Miller. Uh, he's training to do this something that how many Ghanaians do we have? 30 something million of us. Very, I, I don't know how many of us would try it. Uh, he's going to swim, he's going to cycle, and he's going to run. It's going to happen, and he's going to come here and we'll celebrate him for the great things he's doing for us. Mr. Michael Mankwa, thank you so much once again for coming through. Thank you, Jerry and team. Have a great day. Oh, thank too you. soon, people. Time is up. It's about three minutes to the top of the hour.